Welcome to Girl Talk. Thanks for joining us today. We're at Bella Domicile in Fitchburg. It means beautiful home. They want you to have a beautiful home too. Not only are they good at creating a beautiful home, but it's all cool functional stuff. Mm -hmm. and today we're going to learn about cabinetry. I don't know, that doesn't sound very sexy, but it is, I think, interesting. They'll always make it interesting. More interesting, I think, than we think. We're mm -hmm. going to talk about finishes, features, and the whole gamut of price range. Right. Budget size. I love how none of us are helping you out right now, Janet. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, what just do you expecting have? Expecting a monologue. <laughs> so you know, maybe you reckon I'm going to move on uh, to this familiar, maybe familiar face next to me. Stacy Hansen is joining us today. We thought we'd class up the joint and invite Stacy on. Thanks yes. for joining us. Maybe you recognize her from the real estate news or. Uh, maximize Living. Mm -hmm. I want to know, mm -hmm. Stacey, you've been doing that show with Dr. Pat now. He's a chiropractor for a little while. You must be like a junior chiropractor by right. now. You know, I've learned so much from him, and not even just chiropractic stuff, just general wellness things. Yeah. Like, he's changed my diet, too. Like, I always thought I ate pretty well, but he's introduced me to say, kefir? Do you drink kefir? Okay. I've had kefir, yeah. and it's really actually good. It's mm -hmm. delicious. Well, it what is. is it? It's um, kind of like super yogurt, but you drink it, and it's got like yogurt typically has what maybe three, four um, cultures. What are they called? Right, cultures? like the active cultures. Yeah, the active yeah, cultures. The whereas this will have like track. fifteen, twenty. Oh, wow, it is super. Then yeah. yeah, it is really super. You know where I've had it is uh, at Freshy. You ever been oh, to Freshy? Yeah. It's one mm -hmm. of my favorite places. <laughs> I'm an addict. Uh, but they have kefir, like frozen yogurt. Oh, cool. So instead of having That's regular frozen idea. yogurt, it's kefir. And it's really good. It's like a dessert. So a great way to get protein and yes. um, probiotic. Mm -hmm. Yep, protein and probiotic. Although it is kind of high calorie. Like they they recommend a cup serving size, but I usually do like a half a cup because it's like like 150 calories or something huh. for a cup just for something to drink. So. Hmm. Yeah, you could use it. <laughs> well, <laughs> but it does. It, I think it does help me. We learned so much about like how much that can right. help you, your mind, your body, everything. I just oh, yeah. Have... Mind, body connection. Mm -hmm. All right, well that's a, a nice little perk to working with Dr. Pat on yeah. Maximize Living. Yeah. Maybe catch that show on our, our channel another time. We're talking sports today, Wisconsin Sports Services. We're gonna learn about what they do. They're a nonprofit that, I think they create tournaments and leagues and do educational things. Does that sound right? Yeah. yeah. You guys know a little bit about them? The overall goal, I believe, is to basically just help with youth sports mm -hmm. organization and making sure that there's sports available to our youth in an organized fashion and uh, maybe opening some doors to some kids that wouldn't have been able to participate in certain sports and we'll find out more. That's mm -hmm. the extent of my knowledge. On right, the topic, so but. if you're looking to maybe start up something or get a little help if you've been running a program or maybe you'd like to sponsor that kind of program, stick around and we'll meet meet with them. We're also talking more sports with Summit Strength and Fitness. Climbing is becoming more and more popular. Have you ever climbed, Ellen? I have, just once. I've been over to Summit before and I'm so sore. I was oh. there pretty recently. Sore in your gripping muscles? That's what's crazy is in my forearms. Yeah, oh, well, just very not. tender. Yeah, yeah grab but, on, right? um, It was really cool to go there though because Coach Kubi, who we'll have on the show today, in my mind, I always picture climbing as, you know when you're a kid and maybe you go to a party or a museum somewhere and you climb the wall and either you make it to the top or you don't. Like there's no real in between. Sure. This mm -hmm. is totally different and there's all of these different levels and you know, learning the correct forms and there's just so much more to it than I imagined and really using it as a way to stay fit and healthy, which I hadn't really thought of well, before. Well, it's fun. I mean, it's mm -hmm. any time you can find a workout that doesn't feel like a workout, <laughs> I'm in. Exactly. Yes. Today with Coach Kubi, we're going to talk about getting your little ones involved. Uh, youth oh, climbing. Oh, I love that. Yeah, kind of a neat idea. Hmm. So stick around. Girl Talk will be back right after the break. Welcome back to Girl Talk. We're standing here in the kitchen at Bella Domicile, one of the many kitchens, and we're going to talk to the folks here at Bella later in the show. Looking forward to it. Right now, we are talking about a very fun activity that you might know about for adults, climbing, which is gaining popularity thanks to Summit Strength and Fitness. We've got Keith Kubisa, who is the head coach and owner. Today, we're talking about the youth programs. Yeah. 
and I'm excited to learn a little bit about the youth climbing program specifically, but let's talk first about age. What's a good age to start climbing? So to, if we do have some kids coming that are three and four. We, the programs we have aren't geared towards those kids. They kind of come in during the open gym time and just okay. get acclimated with the wall and play sure. around. Uh, but the program itself, the kids are about eight, nine, once they mature a little bit and start to know how sure. to use their bodies. Yeah, and maybe use it more specifically to a program. But I still like the idea of bringing a three or four year old in there to burn off some steam. <laughs> yeah. That's right. Yeah. They, they don't, probably don't get very high. No, we have a little wall, little kids wall away from the big main wall. Where oh, they can, smart. Yeah. They'll oh, sleep well that yeah. night. Yeah. That way too, the adults will fall them and smash them. So. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, for sure. And when the kids sleep well, mom and dad sleep well too. That's mm -hmm. why we're interested. Yes. <laughs> now, can we call you Coach Kubi? Yeah. Yep, sure. Can. Yeah, awesome. All right. Okay. Tell us what a typical day uh, would be like for a kid if they came into the gym. Um, so right now our summer program is just, just on Sunday evenings, um, and it's two hours. So they'll come in, um, kind of in the first couple minutes, do whatever they want on their own. Um, then we'll go into like a pretty general warm up. Just let them run around, get their whole bodies warmed up, and then we'll hop on the climbing wall and go through you know a structured program, just like a kid would go through a structured practice. And, any other sports. So we'll go through some skills on the wall, learn how to move properly, and then we'll usually play a lot of games, incorporate those skills with playing, playing games so the kids have fun and stay engaged. For two hours. Yeah, and yeah. yeah two hours can get can be long unless we, so that's why we can mix it up with some games and have some fun with it and you know take a little snack break. So it's mostly having fun and in a way tricking the kids into learning the skills. So. Yes, and getting some exercise yes. too and not really realizing it. Well, so many kids kind of getting into this now, it's sort, it's sort of new, but as they're growing up, do you think that it's gonna become a thing for like a, a high school type sport, like basketball or something yeah, like that? As I talked about in past shows, you know, climbing's gonna be in the Olympics in 2020, so I think that's gonna oh, cool. be a big draw towards it, um, towards it becoming a standard sport. Um, the Milwaukee area, there's about 15 high schools that have climbing clubs oh, right wow. now. So, so it's starting already. Yeah, yeah, it's already starting, especially in areas out west, so it's only a matter of time till it comes to us. We're always a little a little late yeah. in the game. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Midwesterner. <laughs> um, well, let's talk a little bit about, okay, so you've, you've got obviously a lot of folks that use your gym, probably youth too, that really identify as climbers and are yep. interested in climbing specifically. What about youth who doesn't really identify with the term climber? What about them? We. They can still, we're still getting kids in to use the gym to work out, you know, burn off some steam. You know, the parents can drop them off and they can run around. We have, you know, a couple of kids Wait that... Wait a minute, what age does that start? <laughs> right? <laughs> as long as they can be away from mom and dad for a couple hours and we're not exactly babysitting. So that's, sure, yeah. Um, but it is a way to, you know, to stay in shape, to, to move so you're not behind a screen all day. There's a lot of kids that play other sports and we just use climbing to strengthen their bodies as a whole to help them with their other sports. So I have a girl that plays volleyball, that's how what she enjoys doing. Sort of a cross training yeah. kind of yeah, thing. Yeah, it's gotta hit every muscle group. Oh, yeah. yeah. For kids that are learning these skills and excelling at it, are there out, outdoor uh, activities that would apply? So yeah, there's an outdoor spot to go climbing, Devil's Lake, which is so close close right. to here. Um, but there, that's only 45 minutes from here. And ideally, you know, my hopes is to turn, start turning those kids into climbers. They identify as climbers, so that is then their outdoor activity. Take them up to Devil's Lake, and we do take groups of kids up there to, to Devil's Lake, you know, a couple of times throughout the summer. How great is that? Get a mm -hmm. dose of nature too. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. What a fun thing to get kids involved in, and uh, if you want to get your kiddos involved in climbing or learn more about the youth program, uh, check out Summit Strength and Fitness. Again, this is Keith head coach and owner. Thanks so much for being here today. Thanks for having me. We appreciate it. We've got more Girl Talk coming up after the break. We're here at Bella Domicile and we'll be right back.
welcome back to Girl Talk. We're filming today at Bella Domicile. They're on Nesbitt Road in Fitchburg, and today we'll be talking about cabinetry, drawers, finishes, and all the little details that you need to know when deciding. And they have everything for everyone's budget, so stick around for that. Right now, though, we're meeting with Kyle Flanagan from Wisconsin Sports Services. Thanks for joining us, Kyle. You bet. So you're a nonprofit. What does Wisconsin Sports Services do? Our main job at Wisconsin Sports Services, we host and administer and program youth athletic tournaments, but also uh, uh, any type of athletic tournament, not only throughout the state of Wisconsin, but throughout parts of the Midwest as well. And we also offer educational services as well. Wow, cool. so throughout the Midwest, you guys must be busy. That's a fairly big it area. It is. We make trips up to Minnesota, Iowa, as well as South Dakota for certain events. And then obviously wow. all throughout corner, every corner of the state of Wisconsin as well. So outside of athletic events, what else do you guys do? We do offer educational services. We okay. have an extension program called Trusted Coaches. Uh, and it's just like the name says. It provides background checks oh, and uh, any type of educational services to better uh, uh, acclimate coaches into their athletic program and associations that they work for. Can you give That's an really example? Cool. I'm sorry. Can yeah, you absolutely. So like an association, say there's a youth program an association within a certain town, um, as a way to get their coaches, uh, get their uh, kind of their parents and uh, community better assurance of who the coaches are, they'll go through the Trusted Coaches program, which means there's uh, obviously background checks to give them that security and peace of mind knowing that their coaches obviously are, are up to par with that. And then also there's educational services in terms of um, CPR and then other, and specific to that sport as well. It can get them better acclimated to be a better coach. Oh, that's, that's really cool, and <laughs> I would mouthful. think a relief, yeah. too, for parents to know that they went through that background absolutely. check and maybe have that extra training. Yeah, absolutely. But that is way too big of a job for one man, so I imagine. <laughs> Let's talk a little bit about, Kyle, what you actually do specifically. Now, your title is Director of Business Development. What does that mean? It's a wide variety. I handle all the marketing initiatives, but also develop any new program initiatives as well. Um, obviously, with all of our little, little tournaments that we uh, operate as well, big or small, uh, we look to, within those communities, develop partnerships. Uh, one of our big partners is Dick Sporting Goods, and then we also work with certain in certain areas, like, for example, Milwaukee, Hupi, and Abraham. Gruber Law Offices have both been partners of ours for basketball and baseball events. And then most recently, we are looking to add, uh, for our wrestling tournaments, we're looking to add some prominent people as well. Uh, one of the local people here in town is in some Prairie Elite Wrestling one, Joe Miller. Uh, is becoming one of our partners as well. So we're very excited about that. And then obviously, as I mentioned, for uh, developing programs, um, looking to add different sports to our, our portfolio. Um, in particular, one of the biggest things we have on our docket is possibly lacrosse and or field hockey in the Milwaukee area is becoming cool. more and bigger. And it involves both genders, male and female. So we're looking to possibly look at that realm because you know, one of the nice things that we do is we kind of take that burden that these youth associations have that they have to do in their spare time as volunteers, mm -hmm. and we do that full time, all the time, to make sure that they can better operate not only their leagues, but also their tournaments. Wow, that sounds fantastic. And a shout out to your sponsors. It's Absolutely. You need them. That's awesome. So speaking of local, what local events do you have coming up in the Madison area? You bet. Next week we have one of our biggest softball tournaments, the Fast Pitch U Triple SA State Tournament in Stoughton at Racetrack Park. We have 50 teams coming from all corners of the state. Mm -hmm. um, it's going to be a big event. And uh, when it comes to those softball tournaments, they are very intense and very fierce. Um, mm -hmm. And one of the nice pieces of that is we are at another aspect of our, what we do is we provide educational services, as I mentioned. We are working with the uh, National Scouting Report of Wisconsin, and they're going to be on board. Uh, the age divisions for this tournament are 10U through 18U. And with kind of the recruiting aspects of getting into college and the opportunity aspect, uh, not only for those athletes, it just opens a different realm. We're going to have uh, seminars to help educate parents, coaches, and athletes about the whole process that goes involved and what to look for and make sure that they get all their bonds covered. How valuable that would yeah, be. Absolutely. absolutely. And I know you mentioned too that you have events all across the state and surrounding states as well. Do you have some signature events that I'm sure are coming up that we, we can do. look for this year? Our signature events are called the Badgerland Championships. We have them for baseball, wrestling, and basketball. Obviously okay. basketball being in the sp uh, sp uh, early spring, late, um, late winter in March. Wrestling comes up in lacrosse in January as part of our Midwest Wrestling Tour that we do throughout the entire Midwest and then baseball as well, and that's coming up in July, July 21st to the 23rd, and we have different host sites. We go between what we call the Triangle, Green Bay, Madison, and Milwaukee is different host sites, and uh, it's a very large tournament with uh, a lot of teams throughout the state. Wow, awesome. Busy season, I bet, for you. 
Absolutely. Uh, well, if folks want to sponsor or get involved, where do they find you online? Yep, wisconsinsportservices.org, or they can give us a call, and, and we're located if you just Google Wisconsin Sports Services. We also have Instagram, Twitter, the whole social media aspect as well. Um, and then I'm see if you have any issues where you know you're looking a burden in terms of a program or setting up a tournament is becoming too much. And you want somebody else to work with you on it? Give us a call. That's what we do. Good to know. Awesome. Thanks, Kyle. Kyle Flanagan's with Wisconsin Sports Services. And we're Girl Talk. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Girl Talk. We've been having a great time and a great show here at Bella Domicile and we've been filming in their showroom, which we've been in a kitchen. We've been promising you we're gonna to talk to you about some options for cabinets, and that's one of the great things about Bella Domiciles. They're gonna help you work within your budget and let you know what options are available. So mm -hmm. this is Dondi Zambet Falvey, lead designer here, and thanks for having us today. Thank you, appreciate All it. All right, we got a lot to talk about, so I wanna sure. make sure we do that, but you've, this is actually a new area for yes. you that you've set up. Yep. And what we're showing here is some options with cabinets and drawers that you can have for I suppose any room in your house. Right, this is not a kitchen, uh, as you can tell, right? right? So this actually developed to answer clients' questions. You go in ah. somewhere, the cabinets can look great. So what's the difference? It's really what's the guts of the cabinets are, are, are can make a big difference okay. in the project. And so this is set up so you can see inside if you will, inside sure. a cabinet, so gotcha. you kind of see what's going on. Not just what it looks like, but that's true. I mean, right. you're using the cabinet every day. This is one of your um, go-to items that you store things in, so you're going to want the inside to be functional and the, and the materials to work for you. And the way that this is set up is based on sort of some budget as well, Yeah, right? some budget and features. Um, okay, so let's walk through maybe yeah. from the beginning. So this is um, our, our basically starter line cabinet. It's a very great cabinet. Mm -hmm. So, but how they keep their price point attractive is they take a few drawers because if you look at what's out there in the kitchen universe, uh, most kitchens are one of about five different door styles. So they take, I mean, who hasn't seen the basic shaker door? Right. Here's a basic raised panel door. Mm -hmm. um, this has a little bit of molding on it and just very simple, nice transitional door. And yes. you see the colors are very popular, white. Right a little off white, gray. Um, so what they're doing to keep the price down is not making a thousand million options, but yet we still have some good opportunities A thousand here. million. A thousand million, numbers. yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. No, this is great. And then I, I'm guessing, but tell me how it works with the hardware now. So it, let's say I like this cabinet, but this hardware. Well, the jewelry of the, of the cabinet, the hardware, it's going to kind of that's where you get to kind of personalize it okay. a little bit. So we could put any hardware on any cabinet. Now, yeah. um, we may style-wise, we may not like a certain look, but yeah, that's how we kind of really make it personal to you. But if okay. you look, open up that first drawer on sure. that cabinet, yeah. and if you open up this one, or I'll open up this one, you uh -huh. can see right away that this doesn't quite open all the way up. Oh, interesting. Okay, this okay. one. So full access here. Sometimes that may not, you may not want to pay for this option, you could do this Something option. I never even thought yeah, about yeah. is, yeah, if your drawer doesn't open all the way, which I actually have a few of these at home that doesn't, and it does bug me. Yeah, okay, so there, there, you, go. there you go. So, um, just, learned. just looking here, um, if we look at uh, this cabinet, yeah. maybe a little bit. So this cabinet, do you see how the box, you just see a box here. Sure. Uh, now let's go over to this one, see how there's kind of a frame oh, around it? Yeah, so this sure. is framed construction. This is frameless construction. I see. You get about 8% more storage space in a frameless cabinet. So it depends on what you like. Maybe you like the look of this and the storage doesn't matter. Maybe you want the storage. Yeah. So That's sometimes more people are in a kitchen. We can't really expand their footprint anymore, but we could give them more storage space by going from a frame cabinet to a frameless cabinet. Isn't that interesting? Those little details that you might not think about. I now, certainly wouldn't. Now, how about this one? Maybe you don't want to have any hardware showing on your on your cabinet. Yeah, that's so a nice, pretty open, clean look. Open, okay. open that up. So do you see what's... Oh, wow. The way the cabinet is built is this is recessed, so when you move this open, oh, uh, you, you, I you that was pull easy. the door. Yeah, mm -hmm. sure, nice and easy. Let me pull this one open again. So another difference is the thickness of the shelves. 
So anybody ever have a droop in their shelf? Mm -hmm. um, so the thickness of the shelves, the thickness of the case material is right. different. So if you're going to have a lot of heavy dishes, you might want something a little bit sturdier. Yeah. Or a wider cabinet. So you can choose in this line, you can choose to have this or this. So if I you're see. in the a bathroom where you're not dealing with as many heavy things, you know, right. this may be fine. Kitchen. Your you Q-tips will probably be okay yeah. on yes. the thinner. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. What about this? I just particularly like the look of this. Yeah. That's really pretty. That is a textured um, laminate, actually. Uh -huh. So different. It is a frameless cabinet. Uh, so one thing we're pointing out here is some of these finishes don't go on the case all the time. or or. Or do you want them to be on the I case? See. So this is pretty much the same cabinet, uh -huh. but just look how much different. This is sapile wood, which mm -hmm. is kind of a unique, um, neat texture there. So this one is actually laminate, which is I would have never thought. If you would have asked me, mm -hmm. do I like laminate? I would say no. And but, now I look at it and I love it. But there's texture to sure, it, right? Which you wouldn't. Most people relate laminate to a countertop, right? Yeah. Absolutely. See okay. the difference in the case material I do. here? Yep. Okay. So this is an engineered wood. This is plywood. Okay. So we talk to clients about what the pros and cons of that are. I see. Okay. But you can actually see what the inside of the cabinet looks like. And we don't have a ton of time left. But what is what would be the the reason you would go with a plywood versus an engineer. Plywood's a, a little sturdier product, but this cabinet has a lifetime warranty even with this material. Okay. They're, in fact, if you go to most European made cabinets, mm -hmm. they actually advertise that their cabinets are 100% recycled material. That's what this is. Wow. Um, so okay. that's a engineered wood. People might think of it as particle board, but right. when it's put together at a certain pressure and temperature, it's actually furniture grade. That's what's used in the oh. cabinet. So there's and actually you can a feel a little greener by yes, doing yes. that as well. Well, that's okay. kind of the idea there. Yeah. Okay, um, we got a couple of things left to show yeah. off here. So basically, this is just a different line. We're showing different heights of cabinets. Sure. Some yeah. companies can make any height. Some can make any width. It has a lot to do usually with that soft close. Do too. they make their doors? Yes make their own doors. Here's another engineered or a, fa a frameless cabinet again. Wow. Just with more options. There's so much to think about and some other just sort of details and of course hardware showing off here. Yeah, you don't see a lot of this configuration. Two drawers right. and then a door below. Oh, a nice option. So big, your big stock pot can Well, this is there. great that you have this set up. I mean, obviously we just covered one little space in a room and there's so many options and things to think yeah. about. So that's what's nice about coming here is uh, you guys obviously have the expertise of things, details that we wouldn't be able to think of Appreciate and come that. up with. So again, this is Dondi's on Butt Falvey, lead designer here at Bella Domicile. This is just a small piece of their big, beautiful showroom. I encourage you to come on in. It's a great spot. Thank you so much for watching. Thanks for all of our guests for joining us. We'll see you next time on Girl Talk.